Earlier today in South Africa, a major international media event was held to announce the discovery of a new species of human ancestor. Approximately 20 young scientists, hand-picked by project leader Lee Berger and mentored by senior established scientists, analyzed fossils recovered from South Africa's Rising Star Cave, in all about 1,500 specimens. Among those on the team from the United States were scientists from Dartmouth, NYU, Duke, and Mercier's University. Today, the University of Witzvaterstrand, the National Geographic Society, and the South African National Research Foundation announced a new species of human ancestor, Homo naledi. Now, there are only a, no a few known species of human ancestors in our genus, in Homo. So the discovery of this new species is a very significant find. It introduces a new player to our family tree. Some of the other Homo species are represented by a few fragmented remains, but here with Homo naledi, we have a minimum of 15 individuals. The fossil specimens were first discovered in 2013 by two cavers exploring a system known as the Rising Star Cave System. After discovering the fossils, they were brought to the attention of Dr. Lee Berger of the University of Witzvaterstrand, and Dr. Berger organized a large-scale excavation. The fossil material was scattered and buried along the floor of this cave system in a chamber known as the Dinalady Chamber. You can see from the map of the cave system that reaching the fossil material was not an easy task. They were about 25 meters underground and about 90 meters from the entrance of the cave. It involved crawling through an area less than 10 inches high and up a rugged terrain known as the dragon's back before lowering themselves into the chamber. Because of that size restriction, the six lead excavators in this project, all dressed in blue here, were all women. Once the excavation process was complete, over 1,550 specimens had been recovered. The amount of material covered from this small area is extremely rare. Most fossil sites consist of a few isolated bones or fragments, or if a scientist is lucky, maybe an incomplete individual. But a Dinalidi remains from at least 15 individuals representing both adults and juveniles were found. So now it was time to figure out what species these fossils belong to. Dr. Berger, along with Dr. John Hawks of the University of Wisconsin, decided to hold a month-long workshop where they invited a number of early career scientists to work along with senior experts in the field to address this question. I was chosen as one of those early career scientists. So I went over to South Africa, and for a month straight, I worked together with scientists from all over the globe to describe and analyze these fossil remains. Specifically, I worked on the cranial team, uh, where I helped identify, sort, and describe the cranial fragments. We compared the specimens to other known species of human ancestors and found that our fossils didn't match any of them. We knew at that point that we had a new species. I was also responsible for 3D scanning all the cranial specimens. So scanning the specimens creates a 3D replica of the fossils. Using those models, I was then able to mirror image, pieces and put different specimens together to virtually reconstruct what the skull of this new ancestor looked like. I also led the body size team. Our role was to look at some of the limb bones and estimate how big Homo naledi was. The average stature we came up with was 147 centimeters, or 4 foot 10. Although there were likely some smaller and larger individuals in the assemblage. This meant that Homo naledi was taller than some of our earlier ancestors known as Australopithecines. If you're familiar with the famous Lucy skeleton, she belonged to this group, and she's reconstructed here, standing about three foot eight inches tall. When we think about larger bodied human ancestors and tool makers, we usually think of them having larger sized brains, but Naledi's brain is small. So we see a unique and very intriguing combination of both primitive and human-like characteristics in this new species, which is very different than any other species in our genus. So how can we explain why we have an accumulation of all of these Homo naledi fossils deep in this cave, but no other animal bones? The context team decided that the only explanation left was that they were deposited there intentionally by other members of their group. 
In other words, this is where they deposited their dead. This raises a lot of questions. Why did they deposit their dead there? Was this a ritualistic behavior? Did they have to tra travel the same difficult pathway that the excavators did? And if so, why would they deposit them so deep in the cave? And finally, would they have needed fire to be able to see this far into the cave? We don't really know the answer to all of these questions at this time. But if Homo and the lady was depositing their dead deep in the cave, it suggests that such a behavior was completed with a relatively small brain. That you could have these human-like activities without a human-like brain. So maybe as scientists, we've placed too much emphasis in the past on the brain size in human evolution. If the fossils are older than two million years, uh, they might represent the beginning of our homo lineage. In other words, they might be at the base of our family tree and can give us information about the evolution of our genus. If the dates come out younger, say younger than a million years, the find would be just as significant, as it would mean that we have this smaller brain species sharing environments with larger bodied, larger brain human ancestors. Once dates become available, we'll be able to better put the fossils in the context, and we'll have a better idea of where they fit into our evolutionary history. Overall, the discovery of hominolidae provides yet another piece to the human evolutionary puzzle. It gives us a little bit more knowledge about our evolutionary past, but also raises many more questions. As more fossils are discovered, we'll get a clearer picture of how we became who we are today.